Hey, this is Lulu from Fool Search, and today we are going to be diving deep into Dr. Mike Isratel. So, turns out the exercise scientist that we all love, Mike Isratel, is also a scientific racist. Mike Isratel has been getting a little controversial in the recent times. As you all may know, he has a separate channel where he discusses his political views. He has been also appearing on various podcasts, and he continuously talks about the very, very important role of genetics. He basically claims that everything about the way humans are and the way they behaved is very, very heavily based on your genetics and your biology. Now, of course, genetics, heritage, biology all do have an important role. On the way humans are, that doesn't have to be disputed. However, if you fail to recognize how the environment and socialization actually shapes humans and makes us the way we are, then you fall into a little uh, sketchy ideology. Let's take a look at the clip that Mike Isratel posted on his Making Progress YouTube channel. For example, I'll just cut right into this. The GPT tells you, because you asked it, that your race or ethnic group is not the most intelligent of all of them, and maybe somewhere down the totem pole much further than you had anticipated. You may also discover at the same time that there is a totem pole of racial intelligence, and you're going to go, holy, what? You keep asking it. It's like, yeah, this is reality. You're like, oh my, do I just stop trying? What is this? Holy crap, that's a really big deal. It could really bum you out. Now, inevitably, When you guys get in the comments and ask me questions about race and intelligence, here is my view in perpetuity until politics changes in at least the United States. This is my view uh, as applied forward for the rest of this channel's lifetime until and unless politics really changes. Here it is. Ready? I 100% acknowledge, because I'm literate, that race is truly a biological construct. It is deep. It pervades almost everything. and, And it has real world differences in ability that are complicated, they are overlapping in spectra, but they are nonetheless for sure real, and they affect every single thing about your life on the margins. If you ask me any more questions about that, I won't say anything because I'm not getting canceled over that shit. Because in our current political climate, if I fill in the blanks of what I mean, your boy's out. Fuck that. I'm not ready to, you know what I'm saying, shut down the YouTube yet. But So what I'm saying is, yes, race is real. Yes, race differences exist. Yes, even in every single quality that you think is too politically incorrect to talk about, which is why I'm not going to talk about it. I got plenty of other shit to say, tons of other great stuff. But as a scientifically literate, awake person, I have to say, yes, I'm aware of these things. Right? That's that. So apparently, because Dr. Mike is literate, he knows that race is a biological construct. All right. Well, if you do a quick Google search on this, you will get overwhelming information on why this is just outright wrong. Race was thought to be a biological construct, but scientists today just see this as pseudoscience and classify race as a social construct. So let's break this down. Why is race a social construct and not a biological one? Because clearly there are biological differences between races, right? Like skin color, hair texture, and all that other good stuff. While yes, there are some biological differences between races and their appearances, they are still not enough to separate humans into different biological groups. Meaning that we're still just all one human race and we have slight aesthetic differences. This is not like Baldur's Gate, where one of us is a Githyanki and the other one is an elf, and a dwarf where they actually have different biological makeup. Science shows that humans actually share 99.9% of their DNA, and the tiny superficial differences we have between each other, like skin color, hair texture, which by the way occur because of things like climate adaptations, not because of distinct racial biological groups, these are not enough to categorize us into different sections. In fact, two people from the same race can be more biologically different than two people from a different race. So to understand this concept, let's think of an example. Think of two people. You have a black man from Nigeria and a black man from southern India. They might look similar, but their genetic makeup can be vastly different. In fact, the Nigerian man could be more genetically similar to a white man from Europe than to the Indian man. This proves that shared traits like skin color don't correspond 
to meaningful biological differences. Basically, the way the concept of race began historically is that it was used to label people and put them into boxes, which would then be used to justify things like slavery and colonization and inequality. By pointing out that people were different races, it allowed people in power to assign stereotypes and control and discriminate others that they saw inferior to them. So, in short, race is a social construct. It was created for humans to have the ability to organize society and create hierarchies. Although people thought that this social construct was backed by biology, we now know that it is not in fact backed by science, but it is just based on historical and social ideas. So this is why what Dr. Mike is saying is so dangerous, because believing that race is a biological construct ignores science and keeps stereotypes alive. Now, let's go back to what Dr. Mike thinks, because he is... Literate. In his words, he believes that race pervades almost anything, and it has real-world differences in ability and effects about every single thing in your life. So this is giving me, like very much measuring black people's heads to determine they are actually inferior, therefore they need to be enslaved kind of vibes. But anyway, all jokes aside, it is also proven that non-physical traits aren't linked to our social concept of race. People like Dr. Mike here, I'm guessing, may often associate race with intelligence, athletic ability, and musical talent. But these are just stereotypes and they tend to fall apart once you dig deeper. Basically, any human given the right environment and opportunities can excel in science, sport, and art. The most successful athletes, for example, come from many different ethnic and racial backgrounds, not just one race. Like, you know, there's the stereotype that black people are just genetically superior in sports and all that stuff. Well, then why are many of the most famous bodybuilders white? You know, you have Seabom, Jay Cutler, Arnold, Dr. Mike. So the biggest problem I have with this is that Dr. Mike's brand image has become the fact that he is this very highly educated scientist that knows a lot about the world and looks at the world in a very scientific and nuanced way. Yet he is spewing like the craziest, most easily debunked misinformation. I, I don't understand why someone like Dr. Mike, who is supposed to be someone who is pretty up to date with scientific literature, is so wrong about some of the most foundational things in the world. I mean, seriously, to understand that race is a social, not biological construct, you don't have to do like some deep dive search into the niche areas of the internet. You can just go on the internet and say, is race a biological or social construct? There's going to be overwhelming information saying that it is a social construct. My only assumption of how Dr. Mike has come to these conclusions is that he probably has a significant degree of confirmation bias going on. I don't know where he gets this information because he never cites the studies or anything, but it is possible that he's taking stuff out of context to fit his own bias. I mean, if you Google what the smartest ethnic group is, apparently it's Ashkenazi Jews. And according to Dr. Mike in this clip, People on average, as they become more intelligent, seem to become more libertine in their attitudes. They favor a freer economy, uh, substantially less and more intelligent regulation, and they favor more libertine approach to social things, like live and let live kind of attitude. People who are the most conscientious also tend to be the most libertarian. However, it's important to note that unlike what Dr. Mike probably wants to think, this is not because of their biological makeup, because they're just like this genetically superior race. Modern science today tends to emphasize the fact that differences in intelligence between groups are heavily shaped by environmental factors rather than just your genetics. Stuff like education, socioeconomic status, and culture play a significant role. A 1995 task force by the American Psychological Association found that racial and ethnic groups often have just as much or more variability of intelligence test performance within groups than between groups. Oh, also the research suggesting that Ashkenazi Jews tend to be the smartest ethnic group are said to be based on flawed or biased research. So I will link the page talking more about this if you are interested. So I would like to conclude this video by emphasizing the fact that Dr. Mike also admitted in the video that the things 
he was saying were the watered down version of what he really thinks because I guess you know according to him in our political climate today there are many snowflakes who don't want to believe in pseudo-scientific Nazi-like racial ideology and you know I, I guess that's gonna get him cancelled so yeah I don't know I guess that's something to think about